Hey, it's the end of the year, which means an obligatory top 10 games of the year list, because everyone likes lists, and it's something that everyone has to do. Now, my list is going to be a little bit different, because rather than picking the highest rated ones, or the best scored, or whatever, I'm picking the ones that I played, and I personally had the most fun with. So it's much more personal top 10 list, rather than an all-encompassing thing. So just keep that in mind as we go through this, but here you are, Pro Jared's Top 10 Games of 2012. Number 10. Xenoblade Chronicles. Monolith Soft makes great RPGs, and Xenoblade Chronicles is no exception. I know it's been out for a while in other places, but we didn't get it in the States until 2012. And I'm really glad we did. Great RPG gameplay, great presentation, and lots of stuff to do kept Xenoblade spinning in my dusty Wii for quite some time. I did have a few minor gripes with it, but it's still one of the best JRPGs of this console generation, and it was refreshing to see. It's one of those games where you'd see Xenoblade Chronicles on every best of Wii games list. It was the Wii's best release all year. Now it's right time! Number 9. Mass Effect 3. First off, yes, okay, I know, the original ending was bad and nah, nah, it ruined Mass Effect, nah! Second, shut up. Mass Effect 3 is still a really good game with a lot of fantastic moments that wasn't the ending. Seeing Thane get one last moment to kick ass was great, and I'll never forget what Morden did. They brought back a lot of much needed RPG elements, better customization, and while the extended ending still isn't perfect, it's much better than what we had before. What really surprised me with Mass Effect 3 was how much I enjoyed the multiplayer. The co-op mode kept me playing it for several weeks after I had finished the campaign, because it was just fun with my friends. And the multiplayer is still being supported to this day with new weekend events and free DLC. While I still think it's not as good as Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 3 is still a really well-rounded package with too much concentration on its shortcomings. I should go. Number 8. Smite. I'm not really into MOBAs. I tried League of Legends and I didn't really like it, so I'm really surprised how much I enjoy Smite. It's basically the same game, just presented differently. And I think it's a third-person camera that keeps me into the game instead of the real-time strategy view. It makes the game feel much more fast-paced and action-oriented than other MOBAs. It reminds me of the Battlegrounds in World of Warcraft. The developer hi -Rez Studios has also been adding in different game modes and steadily adding in new characters. It's also great to see them actively listening to player feedback and being very communicative. I'm still not super into MOBAs, and I'll certainly never be a top tier player or whatever, but I have a lot of fun with Smite. It has stayed with me and my friends for months, and it'll continue to do so. An enemy has been slain. Number 7. Resident Evil Revelations. This is still the best 3DS game out there, it's that impressive. The graphics are easily the most technically impressive on the handheld, the 3D is very well done, and most importantly, the gameplay feels like how a Resident Evil should. Tight corridors, spooky atmosphere, and the fact that each enemy is a threat on its own instead of being swarms of fodder. I personally think Revelations puts Resident Evil 6 to shame. What I like most about Revelation is that it's assurance that Capcom knows how to make good Resident Evil games. We may only see Resident Evil games that follow the series' roots on handhelds, while the console Resident Evil games are all flashy explosion action fests. If you have a 3DS, you owe it to yourself to pick this game up. It's that good, and I highly recommend it. Hold on, Chris. I'll be right there. Number 6. Dishonored. Dishonored is one of those few games that is different every time you play it. With all the different powers you can use, styles of play, and numerous ways of approaching and escaping every situation, it makes Dishonored fun to pick up whenever you feel like it. Here's what I like most about it. It provides what is essentially limitless amounts of water cooler talk. Everybody plays the game so differently that everyone develops their own stories and shares them. It's a lot like how everybody talked about their Skyrim adventures. It lets you know of all the possibilities you haven't seen and different tactics you could try, making you want to go back to the game. Of course, it helps that Dishonored is a really fun game, presenting tons of objectives with tons of solutions. And stabbing people. Number 5. Journey. Journey is simply the best cooperative non-game I have ever played. It has one of the most gripping stories I've ever seen, despite having absolutely no setup, no background, no dialogue, or a story at all. It's the human interaction that occurs between a faceless, voiceless companion that makes the game truly compelling. 
It was a strange, almost wondrous feeling as I waited atop a hill for 10 minutes hoping that my unnamed companion would make it to me. I certainly didn't mind waiting as I got to appreciate the gorgeous landscapes and sweeping musical score. And that sweet ass scarf. Number 4. Mark of the Ninja. This is the best stealth game I have played in years, an impressive feat for an entirely 2D game. It offers up more possibilities and mechanics than most 3D stealth games. The use of sight and sound against enemies is impeccable, and it offers up more rewards for not killing enemies, really giving a focus on stealth gameplay. Getting into combat is practically a death sentence, ensuring that you keep yourself hidden and play smart. Mark of the Ninja is good the whole way through as it introduces new challenges and types of obstacles in every stage. It makes the game consistently fresh and worth playing through to the end. And because of Mark of the Ninja, the Tenchu series just won't be ever as good to me ever again. Number 3. Dragon's Dogma. This game has tons of problems, issues, and annoyances that plague it from being a truly great game. But god damn it, I love this game! This is the most fun I've had with an RPG in a long time. Climbing on enemies to hit weak spots or gripping onto a flying monster as it takes off is some of the best action you could ask for in a role-playing game. The combat in Dragon's Dogma is better than any of the Elder Scrolls games. All of the customization is fantastic, the class and skill systems offers up plenty of variety, and the pawn system lets your friends join you in your game. Even though Dragon's Dogma has all these bugs and grievances, I had way more fun with it than I do most AAA titles that come out during the holiday rush. If you overlooked it because it has a Metacritic score of less than 8, check it out. I'm really happy to see that a brand new IP can have legs, as Dragon's Dogma is already confirmed for a sequel from Capcom. Just let the sequel have a full cooperative game mode, please? Number 2. XCOM Enemy Unknown I made it pretty clear that I was a big fan of the original XCOM games from the 90s, and I was very, very pleased with what Firaxis did with XCOM Enemy Unknown. The streamlined combat made playing it a bit easier, but it still offered plenty of depth, tactics, and strategy in every aspect. The base building and research options are still cool, and the game is still super challenging. I play in the hardcore classic difficulty, and I've had to restart the game a lot of times. But I don't mind. XCOM is a rare game in which I look forward to starting over in. All the gameplay options offer just enough variance to make repeated missions not overbearing, and the World Panic Tracker makes every combat situation important with dire consequences. You get quickly invested into every game. XCOM is really hard to put down after you start playing, grabbing you with the just one more turn mentality and never letting go. Taken care of. And my number one game of 2012 is... Legend of Grimrock. Man, was I impressed by this game. This is another one of those titles that happens to appeal to my tastes, as I spent many hours of my childhood playing dungeon crawlers like Dungeon Hack instead of going outside. Grimrock recreates those old dungeon crawlers so faithfully it's a little mind-boggling that dungeon crawlers aren't still popular today. At the same time, it updates everything and makes the user interface a lot better to make it one of the best dungeon crawler games ever made. The exploration is excellent, finding secrets is always very rewarding with new gear for your ragtag party, and every monster rearing its ugly head is dangerous. My favorite part of the game is the puzzles. I was always used to the hidden switches found on walls or nearby doors, but Legend of Grimrock throws in some riddles, reflex-based timing, and critical thinking for some of the best treasures. If you want some of the best feelings of self-achievement ever, play the Legend of Grimrock and solve the puzzles without using any kind of help or walkthrough. You'll feel like a genius when you figure it out, making Legend of Grimrock the most rewarding game experience I had this year. If you didn't see one of your favorite games on the list, well, there's two reasons for that. One, I didn't like it as much as you, or two, I probably didn't play it. So you should let me know, because I missed a lot of games throughout 2012 because I spent most of the year playing the bad ones. And 2012 had plenty of bad ones. Don't worry. I'll let you know which 10 are the worst.